What's up guys, welcome back to Adventure Zach. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of maintenance today. Um, we're gonna replace our rear brake pads. My rear brake pads are utterly non-existent like you guys saw. Um, so we're gonna take care of those. All right, so I guess first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and jack the bike up. And the reason being mainly because, get that light out of the way. Mainly because this makes it so much easier to work on the bike. That actually really hurts your foot with no shoes on. <laughs> Whatever. Just as a heads up guys, this thing right here, any service manual for any vehicle that you have that you are going to be doing work on yourself, pick yourself one up. Highly worth it. I know sometimes it can be expensive, upwards of a hundred bucks. Um, get yourself one though. Highly worth it. Don't need it for the brake pads, but I figured I'd show you guys here, rear brake pad assembly. Remove the uh, pin plug. They got the pin. You know, this is good knowledge here because a lot of people, like with the wheel bearing thing that I showed, don't do this as far as greasing the bushing. It's like when you're doing pads on a car, you want to grease your slide pins. You don't grease your slide pins, you clean them off, don't re-grease them. They stick, you know, you're going to have a bad day. So this is what it tells you to do though for brake pads. Just so you know, super, super simple. Get yourself a service manual though. And again, these are the rear pads. FA629R is the, I believe that's the part number. Maybe that's a model number or whatever. Um, EBC pads for the rear for a 2017 CRF250L. I think this fits anywhere between the 2013 all the way up to the 2019. I do believe it's the same pad. So, so what we're going to go ahead and do is I've already removed the pin plug. It's literally just this little bushing. I think I've told you guys before. One of your best friends, man, if you got kids, baby wipes. Um, you don't want to use them for everything. They're not good for cleaning visors, windshields, anything like that. The reason being is because they can sometimes leave a film of like a lotion-y type film, um, but they work wonders for removing dirt, grime, um, even like bug grime and stuff like that. Windex as well, because it dries real quick. These dry really fast too, and I don't ever have a problem with these things as far as leaving residues or anything. And it's easy on rubbers, plastics like this. Like you clean your, dirt and stuff off the rubber you don't have to worry about i don't think windex harms anything maybe it does because a lot of windexes if you're using a lot of rubbers and plastics i think a lot of windexes have ammonia in them and i don't know if that's good or bad for rubber or plastic maybe it's not going to hurt anything you know maybe over extended periods of time using it a lot might cause you know that that scoring look or start to crack the rubber or whatever I'm not really sure but i use baby wipes man to work wonders so and again and again as you guys can see look at those rear pads i'm already smacking everything up here on my helmet but whatever um i'm probably gonna have to crack this off to compress my I'm actually gonna have to probably take the whole caliper assembly off because i'm gonna have to push the piston in because as you can tell again you know it's it's literally a thousandth you know of a distance away from the rotor itself rubbing just to the bare metal of the the pad housing whatever you want to call it so we're going to go ahead and take this this bolt out pin i'm just gonna have to crack it loose like this it's actually kind of tight i might have to use my i think i have the correct size in here for my t-wrench ah that's not right but i do know i have the correct size in here I just guarantee you. And that's why I love having this thing in here because these are these work well. Parts like this, I could break that free. They're gonna hurt the hell out of my hand if they're doing it. So I'm gonna just use a T wrench, break it free with this. Yeah, this gives you much more leverage, as you can see. And then from there, just swap. out 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to probably crack my whole assembly off though in order to compress the piston back in. A couple really good easy ways to do that with this being such a small caliper. I just use the old existing pads and a pair of This isn't the right size to keep all my stuff. <clears throat> and this is all just using the toolkit that I use for my bike all the time. Not all the time, but whenever I'm working on anything, that's why I like having everything in there that I would need in order to work on my bike. As you can tell, look at that, man. See how dry that is? There's literally nothing on there. So we'll clean it up. And we'll re-grease the O-ring. Put a little bit of grease on the O-ring. Now this isn't a slide pin though, like on a car. You don't have to grease this whole thing up because you can tell 90% of it is exposed. So just want to put a little bit of grease on the O-ring itself though so it doesn't dry out, rot out, things of that nature. These pads just slide right out. Look at that. Look at that, guys. There's nothing left. Nothing left. Look at that. I wonder if that has a lot to do with when we rode AOAA. And the reason why I'm saying that is because you see all this residual gray looking matter on my rotor and everything. That was that gray, um, I guess you'd call it like the mine gravel i don't know i honestly don't know but a lot of the roads there were that really dingy gray um i guess from the mines i don't know and i wonder if the abrasiveness of that because you can tell it's been all over the pads and all, i wonder if the abrasiveness of that caused the pads to significantly wear that day with aoa I, I don't know i really don't I mean, these things had less than 2,000 miles on them. Maybe pushing 2,000. Let's just round it up and just say these things had 2,000 miles on them. And they went from looking, you know, 90% life left to none, to 2% life left in 2,000 miles. That, that's crazy. And I've been doing 90% off-road riding. That's, that's crazy. I think these are OEM pads, though. Um, well, these are. These are replacement OEM pads. So I'm hoping um, that the EBCs will have a much better wear life than these OEM replacement pads because these OEM replace replacement pads are really cheap. They're literally like 17 bucks, just the factory Nissan um, pads, but I think they wear like shit. That's something my brother has always taught me. I'll take his word for it. It makes sense when you think about it. Um, but he's always taught me that whenever you go to compress a brake caliper, or piston, I mean, not caliper, I'm sorry, um, back into the caliper assembly itself to take the brake reservoir cap off. So you can see, look how low my level is. The fluid looks good. I think on my next, um, eh, maybe I'll just do it this winter. Um, cause I'm also going to be doing the stage one performance kit on this thing and I'll do a full installation video and review and all that of that when I do that for you guys. But he's always taught me to take the cap off whenever you compress the piston back into the caliper housing and, um, because it allows your level to rise and it makes sense when you think about it. I don't know if it's really 100% needed, but it makes sense because the fluid's got to rise right now. This is a sealed housing for that fluid to rise up. Um, there shouldn't be air in here, obviously, but you would think that the fluid rising, pushing back through the system with this cap on would give it a hard time to push back up. Who knows, but it makes sense. We're going to go ahead and do that. Now, one thing I will say though, is definitely, definitely do not. If you take this cap off and you push the piston back, that's fine but do not hit this brake. Hit your front or your rear if you do that. If you do that, you're gonna start sucking air into your brake system. So just remember, you suck air into your brake system, you can have detrimental effects to that. You can freaking severely injure yourself. So I, I take no responsibility if you guys do this. 
um, just remember, do not touch your brake pedal whatsoever with this cap off. So do not do that. That's, you know, your own responsibility. If you do this, you're on your own. So it's a very simple thing to just do not touch your pedal. Don't do it. Unless you want to get air in your brake system. So just clean that off a little bit so I don't get any debris or anything inside my reservoir. I might actually zip this up to my Something I always do with these two is whenever I'm tightening them back down, I always tend to. I'm just using the multi screwdriver, by the way, that I keep in my toolkit. It goes from Phillips to flat, bigger to small. Pretty much all you need on a bike. You don't really need anything more than what comes in this. If you happen to be wondering, the strap is actually for my tank bag. I don't know if you were. I figured I'd say. All right, so we got the reservoir cap off. The fluid still looks really good. Um, could be a little bit clear, but it still looks really good. So we'll go ahead and I think I can just compress this caliper in actually. I see my light. So we're just gonna try to compress the piston with this. I think this will work actually. Should work perfectly fine fluid levels will go up now if you try to now again i take no responsibility on any damages done to your bike but this is just a bmw tire spoon amazing for my tool bag um with that said though take the cap off your piston if you go to compress your piston in like this and it doesn't go in like super super easy like look i'm barely putting in any any force on mine and it's going in so if yours isn't don't force it you might have to take the whole assembly off see how easily mine's going in i mean i'm barely putting any force on that and it's going in and as you can tell i'm kind of moving around i could probably push that in by hand and i can so i'm literally just using my index and my middle finger and boom the piston's going right in and i got one finger on each side to try to keep it going in nice and straight um but i'm compressing the piston in you see the fluid level has significantly significantly risen see it it was all the way down at the lower level earlier now it's midway and that's just because the pads were so worn the piston went out so far there was more fluid inside the caliper and in the line mainly inside here um, where the piston is than what is usually in there for when your pads but you can see the level rising when I push that in so I've got it pushed almost all the way in I don't know if you got to push it all the way in for these this would be the Yeah, there we go. I think that's actually all the way in. I don't think that's going to go any further. I can't get it to go any further by hand. But so, yeah, you can compress it in there with your fingers. Use minimal force um, with something like a tire spoon and a big flathead screwdriver. If it's as low as mine was, it was almost all the way up against the rotor itself. So I was able to um, push it back just enough. With that, I'll let this dry too. I'm just trying to make sure I get some of that grunge out. It was in there. I'm not going to really be able to get it out of the rear. That's fine. Um, so yeah, I don't know if anybody who's watching this that hasn't done pads before don't want to get grease or anything like that on the actual pad surface. There's been a lot of people that'll tell you, you know, try not to touch them, things like that, without gloves on. Absolutely, if you got greasy fingers or there's anything on your hands that might contaminate them um, for sure. So I've touched them before, never had any problems, but I always tend to keep my hands clean though before I do any working on my bike and I continuously clean my hands if I'm not wearing gloves for the fact of any of that. Here's our new pads. And if you can see, whew, a big difference, man. Big difference, man. This one right here will be this one. This is actually, look at the difference in that. The pad on this is thicker than the whole unit of this. So again, these are the EBCs, high performance off-road brake pads. Um, I did do a little bit of research into them though. These are really good for the road as well. Um, but it's mainly off-road that you get your most wear and tear on. That is what you want. If you go to move this caliber assembly and it doesn't move or it's chunky or it's <laughs> 
then you need to take this apart, clean it all off, re-lube where it needs to be lubed. That's the bleeder valve if you're going to bleed your brakes. Again, don't touch that rear brake caliper. I mean rear brake pedal, sorry. As you can tell, my level now is pretty much at the upper. Once I reassemble it, it's probably going to be at the upper. Once I, you know, hit the brake a little bit, it'll go a little bit lower. That's fine. You don't need to be at your upper or above. If you're above the upper line or at the upper line, typically when you put that rubber boot back inside of the reservoir, you leak fluid. So I, I don't ever usually fill it all the way at the upper. I usually have it just a hair lower just so it doesn't spill everywhere. That's just me though. All right, so as you can tell, this was the front pad. This right here was the rear pad. I always take my pads out the same way just to, you know, so I think I can just slide this puppy in here. Get it in place. Make sure it's in place. Like so. And same thing with the front. Slide the front in place. It's so crazy how easy it is to do the brakes on this thing. You literally just slide into the assembly there. And that's how you know if you're all the way in. You see, you see that cut out right there because you can't get into it without taking the assembly off. But you see that right there? Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. Where the end of the pad is. See how it's on that ledge? That's where you want to be. If your pad's not and it's not going all the way back or it's falling down, you'll know but typically as long as you're lined up with the hole like i am on both sides here lined up with the hole where the pin goes through you're good so you can always take it out you know in there a little bit just to make sure as long as you're all the way up and you're all the way lined up with that hole then you're usually good i'll put the pin in and just double check just because i'm that type of guy all right so when we cleaned our pin off um doesn't look like it is but it is and we'll just put a little bit of grease an o-ring you know also helps it slide in a little bit what we're going to do to tighten this back down we're going to lay the pads flat so they go when the piston compresses them you don't want to have these all janky like that i like to lay them flat do it on cars too just to make sure that they're nice straight even this is one snug that puppy down get a good torque on that so I'll just again that's good that's good that's all you need not too much not too little pin plugs in make sure it's nice and flat flush and in there just give it a little push twist pops it down in there Come back over to the reservoir. We're gonna go ahead and put the reservoir back together. As you can see, of course, that's all good though. As you can see, it's gonna wanna, it wanted to fall out of my hand, which I'm trying to not get it all over my hands. But what are you gonna do? If it wants to get all over my hands, I guess it will. Yeah, go wash them again. So, get the cap back on. As you can tell, see the difference in that now? It's back at the upper, and it's literally right below the boot. Now, I haven't I haven't recompressed the caliper piston by pumping the brake pedal, and we're going to do that here in a few minutes once we get this all reassembled. Um, but obviously, again, you don't want to do it beforehand. I don't like to like anything. I like the... Anything that's got some type of gasket or anything on it, just do each side a little by little. And I'll wipe the reservoir off again when I'm done this. So anybody should know that has a bike, you never want to over tighten these. The head of the screws strip out very easily. And you can strip out the reservoir very easily. You just want to tighten it down. and snug like that you see we still got a little bit of 
fluid come out from the edge of the gasket. And just wipe that off. Make sure it's nice and clean. We're gonna go wash this off my hands real quick. All right, so yeah, that's, that's it. It's as simple as placing the rear brake pads on a CRF250L. So now we're gonna go ahead and just tighten the reservoir back down. I think this is the right size, yeah. Tighten this back down. And soon here I will be replacing my chain. I'm going with an X-ring chain as well, a gold X-ring. So the fluid looks a little bit lower putting it in here like this, but that's because it's it's not straight. So I'll add fluid to it. But I think when I do my pads next, I'm probably gonna replace the rear rotor if it needs it or just upgrade. Um, that's good. Um, yeah, so that's it for the rear brake pad replacement. Super, super simple. You literally take out, if you, if you don't do that, you literally take out one bolt, which is a pin. Pop the old pads out, compress the piston back in, slide the new pads in, put the pin back in, boom.